In this video, we're going to take the next step with Django Rust Framework and go over how to set up an authentication token so that when you make a request, you can make a request for authenticated data without having to have a session set. Authentication tokens are often a way to have a single string available to you and that you send it along with your request to get back data. And with Django Rust Framework, it's fairly trivial to set up. The first thing we'll do is we'll open up our settings project. We'll go down to our installed apps and add REST Framework dot auth token. So that way we have the application that REST Framework has for doing authentication tokens. Next thing we'll do is we'll just do a migrate of our data to create the proper tables in the database for us so we can store our tokens for our users. Then we need to actually set it to where it's valid to use in our views by importing the token authentication class from our REST framework authentication. And then in our document view set, we're going to set authentication classes and add a tuple with the first one being token authentication. This tells our document view set that we're going to use authentication and we're going to use only token authentication for right now. After all that's done, we need to go ahead and set up our token for our user. So we'll just get our user object for an existing user. In this case, we'll get my user. Then we import from restframework.authtoken.models and we get our token model. And then we just create a new token with token.objects.create and pass it our user object. This goes ahead and creates our token. And then to get our token key for our user, we just do print token.key. And then you'll want to save that token off somewhere or more likely display it to your user somewhere. Another thing to note is if you have a whole bunch of users already and you're adding token authentication after the fact, then you're going to need to go ahead and generate tokens for people. And you can do that with a simple for loop like we're doing here. You just get all the users and then do a creation again like we did above. And then at that point, all your existing users have the opportunity to use tokens. So with that, let's actually give it a shot. If we we'll open up our split tmux pane and start our server, we do our first curl, we do curl, and we do a get. We're going to call API files. Then we're going to pass in header of authorization. We're going to do a colon and then a space to token. And then after the token, we're going to do a space and then our token key. It has to be in this format when you do a raw call like this. Once we press enter, you see we get data back from our API. If we'll do this call again, except we don't include our authorization token, you note that we still get data. This is an important distinction because just because you have the token authentication set for a class view, if you don't set any permissions for that view, then it's still going to run everything like normal. So we'll go ahead and open up our view again and we'll import from our permissions the is authenticated class and then down in our document view set add permission classes of is authenticated then the next time after we start up our server and run our command it errors out and we get detail authentication credentials were not provided which is what we would expect to get and then if we'll make the call with our authorization token you'll see we get our data back properly so with that you've seen how easy it is to set up and get authorization tokens for your users. You simply add the app to your installed apps, do a migration, and then create tokens for each of your users.